Story 1 Blake has been a mountain biker for almost two decades and has been mountain biking since he was 17. Despite being nearly 38 now, he can cycle as if he were still young, enjoying cross-country biking events. Ever since he had a child, he lost focus on mountain biking and had to focus on being a father to his daughter Willow. His nine-year-old daughter Willow has been taking lessons from him, hoping she will follow in his professional mountain biking footsteps one day. Blake customized a personal bike for his daughter when she first showed interest in mountain biking and told him about it. Just like most parents, Blake was delighted to know that Willow wanted to be like him and was willing to learn the thing that he has loved doing the most throughout the years. After several months of training Willow by himself, Willow had become a strong biker. They would even get their first few attempts at mountain biking together by trying to bike in national parks all around the country. Now that Willow has already mastered the basics and has gotten a few professional skills already, Blake decides to take her to Glacier National Park in Montana for mountain biking. Blake was amazed by Willow's abilities as soon as they began cycling through the biking trail. He had kept an eye on her during their trip to the national park. Aside from that, Willow enjoyed watching all the sights and exploring her surroundings. Blake was glad to have his daughter enjoy the same things he did when he was young. As they passed the flat lower sections of the Going to the Sun Road, Blake and Willow decided to rest and sit next to a small lake surrounded by breathtaking views of trees and mountain ranges. Blake told Willow they needed to rest since they would later cycle to a higher biking trail. Blake took out his phone to take pictures, while Willow took out her water bottle and chugged mouthfuls. Their cycling made her thirsty since it was also a hot sunny day. A couple of minutes passed and Blake and Willow decided to continue cycling again and eventually reached the higher elevations of the Going to the Sun Road in no time. They agreed to cycle slowly first, since Willow still wanted to look at the sights around them. While passing a road surrounded by trees, the two stopped when they suddenly heard huffing sounds at a distance. Willow initially thought it was just something in the wind, but Blake concluded that it might be a wild animal approaching the road anytime soon. He told his daughter they'd cycle back and exit the national park as quickly as possible. As they turned around and went the opposite way to return, a grizzly bear leapt out of the woods beside them, confirming that it was the one making the chuffing sounds a few seconds ago. Willow almost panicked and lost balance on her bike when Blake told her that grizzly bears rarely harm people and it's probably just hungry. After hearing that, Willow calmed down and continued riding with her father. When they thought the bear wouldn't harm them, Blake was shocked when he glanced back and saw that the bear was approaching them faster and aiming to charge at Willow. He warns his daughter to pedal quickly as the grizzly bear begins coming at her faster and faster. Suddenly, the bear found a perfect chance and jumped at Willow, causing her to get thrown off her bike and pinned down to the ground which caused Blake to stop and get terrified by the sight of a grizzly bear attacking his daughter. The bear began to growl and bite Willow's head as Blake rushed to punch the bear and fight it with his bare hands to save his daughter. Unfortunately, the bear growled again and clawed Blake's face to push him away. Blake screamed in pain as he touched his face and saw blood in his hands. However, he didn't think much of that because his priority was saving his daughter. He then tries to punch and push the bear away from his daughter, but it was useless. As the bear piled on Willow, she continued to wail and was on the verge of being crushed. It was a rough couple of minutes when suddenly a park ranger vehicle was passing by and saw the attack going on, which caused them to stop. Two male park rangers got out of the car, one carrying a gun, and decided to fire a warning shot to scare the bear. When the bear stopped attacking Willow and injuring Blake, another shot is fired, causing it to run away from the scene. The other park ranger approached Willow and carried her to the vehicle, while the other park ranger picked up their bikes and carried them to the car, after Blake had also got inside. The park rangers took them to the nearest hospital and confirmed that Willow and Blake had to stay there to recover from puncture wounds and injuries on their bodies. However, despite being brutally attacked, they have a high chance of recovering fast with proper treatment and medical attention. 
Blake eventually thanked the two park rangers who saved him and his daughter's life from inevitable death. Story 2 Calvin and Melanie have loved hiking together since they were 16. They met at hiking school and eventually became close friends. Since Melanie feared heights back then, Calvin helped her cope and overcome them in no time. After graduating from hiking school, Calvin and Melanie started to go to different national parks in the country to hike and get closer to each other as time passed. As their friendship grows as the years go by, Calvin and Melanie confess that they see each other more than friends and want to be partners who share their love for hiking. As they got together, Calvin and Melanie became more comfortable with each other and became more adventurous with time. They loved exploring and hiking, as this was their favorite thing to do as a couple. They also had a lot of breathtaking and terrifying experiences in the wild, and several times they encountered grizzly bears that nearly mauled the two of them to death. But luckily, they always escaped and got home safe and sound. In the sixth year of their relationship as a couple, Calvin proposed to Melanie during one of their hiking trips, which Melanie joyfully accepted. Their families and friends from hiking school were happy with the news, knowing they had met each other doing what they loved most. Several months after the proposal, the couple decided to prepare for their simple wedding, which included having a prenup shoot. Choosing a theme for their prenup shoot wasn't as complicated as they thought it would be, since they instinctively thought of having a hiking-themed photo shoot at one of their favorite national parks, the Katmai National Park in Alaska. Calvin, Melanie, and a professional photographer named Tripp went to the scenic meadows within Katmai National Park to do the prenup shoot. Calvin wears a simple brown suit, while Melanie wears a brown dress, their favorite color. Tripp quickly prepared everything he needed for the photo shoot. He had set up a tripod with a camera facing a breathtaking view of the fields and mountains, and a handheld camera to take close-up and candid photos of the couple. After setting up the camera, they ensured there were no wild animals around to start the photo shoot. Calvin and Melanie then positioned themselves in front of Tripp's camera, as the photographer told them to do certain poses for the shots. So far, the couple was doing well, and the photos look stunning. After that, Tripp takes candid photos of Calvin and Melanie with his handheld camera, and as expected, the photos look beautiful. Tripp then tells the couple to take a few last shots with the camera on the tripod so they can choose the pictures for their wedding. As Calvin and Melanie are about to kiss for the camera, Tripp stops them and tells them that he sees a grizzly bear looking at them directly from a distance. The couple looked in the direction that Tripp pointed out, and it was true. A grizzly bear was looking at them. Since they had a lot of encounters with grizzly bears, Calvin casually told Tripp that it was natural for them to stare since they would go away immediately. Tripp felt uneasy as Calvin and Melanie smiled and posed for the camera again. His hands were shaking and he could barely click the shutter button on his camera to take a photo. As he looked at the couple through the camera, things went quickly, like the speed of light Melanie was abruptly pulled to the ground and dragged by the hungry bear after being gripped by the hem of her dress. While Tripp nearly passed out from fear, Calvin froze in place as events suddenly unfolded in front of him. Calvin comes to his senses and starts chasing the bear, pulling his soon-to-be wife. The bear then jumps on top of Melanie and begins attacking her by biting her head and scratching her face and torso with its sharp claws. Melanie could feel the grizzly bear's claws pierce through her skin, making her scream in excruciating pain. Calvin tried to fight the bear by pushing it away and punching its face, but got bitten on the arm, which made him back away. On the other hand, Tripp has thought of a way to fight the bear. He removed the camera from the tripod and carried it to attempt to smash the bear's head with it. He runs to the scene and helps Calvin fight the bear, as he hits the bear's head with the tripod several times. The bear started flinching, indicating that he was getting hurt by it. Calvin and Tripp continued fighting the bear until it decided to escape completely. However, Melanie was left bloodied and unconscious on the ground. Calvin and Tripp picked her up and carried her inside their vehicle, taking her to a nearby hospital. Despite suffering from severe wounds and injuries, Melanie survived 
and will become stable in no time. Unfortunately, their wedding would probably be canceled until Melanie recovered from her injuries. Story 3 Quentin is a young guy celebrating his 20th birthday with his friends and family. Despite being the oldest child and grandchild of the family, he hasn't experienced having a grand party to celebrate his birthday. However, he still grew up as a kind and selfless child to his parents. Since he was doing great in his college career, his family surprised him by booking an Airbnb cabin in the woods of Wyoming. When he was told they'd be celebrating his big day there, he couldn't feel anything more than happiness since he got to celebrate his birthday in a fun way for the first time. The Airbnb cabin can accommodate more than 30 people, so his parents told him he could invite some friends. Quentin invited his closest high school and college friends, Lyra, Saul, Jason, May, and Watson. When Quentin was done inviting his friends, they headed for the cabin in Wyoming the next day. It was a big cabin in the woods, situated in the middle of a national forest. The house also offers biking, hiking, stargazing, and other outdoor activities when visitors get bored. Quentin was amazed by how big the place was, as they all had to choose their rooms. Quentin and his friends decided to stay in one big room, which perfectly fit them inside. After unpacking their stuff and belongings, Quentin's family started cooking food while he and his friends prepared the decorations for the party. After several hours of preparing for the party, they all decided to rest and chat in the cabin's large living room. They all watched a movie that made them seem like one big happy family. When nighttime came, the party started. Quentin's cousins were in charge of the loud music while his siblings hosted the party. They ate tons of buffet food, played parlor games, and sang the happy birthday song to Quentin before blowing out his cake. Everything about the party went perfectly and smoothly as expected, and Quentin couldn't be any much happier than he was feeling right now. As the party ended, Quentin's family members went to their rooms while he and his friends went stargazing outside the cabin. They talked about their high school and college lives and silly experiences together as friends. After stargazing, Quentin, Lyra, Saul, Jason, May, and Watson headed inside the cabin to sleep after a tiring day. As they entered their room, they tucked themselves into their beds and slept, except for Quentin and Watson, who played online games on their phones. While playing, they suddenly heard noises from downstairs, making them stop. They immediately dropped their phones and stood up from their beds to inspect the noise. Watson asked if it could be a thief but Quentin insists that there are no thieves since they're in the middle of a national forest. Watson then jokes about having a serial killer enter their house, just like in the movies. Quentin didn't find the joke funny, and he told Watson that maybe it was just one of his cousins trying to get a late-night snack. The two decided to inspect the noise even more by slowly going downstairs. They heard the noise coming from the kitchen as they left their room and went downstairs. It was dark inside the cabin, so Watson told Quentin that he'd approach the noise and confront whoever it was after he turned the lights on. Quentin agreed as he came to the kitchen slowly and tried not to get hurt. As Watson turned the lights on, they were both surprised to see a grizzly bear searching in their kitchen. Quentin screamed as the grizzly bear became startled and jumped at him, tackling him down to the floor. The bear began to attack him by clawing his face, arms, shoulders, and upper body. Quentin's screams can be heard around the cabin, waking up his family and friends. As his parents left their room, they were horrified to see their son getting attacked by a grizzly bear. Saul and Jason also came out of their room and went downstairs along with two of Quentin's male cousins to help him from the bear. There, they bravely ganged up against the bear by throwing punches and hitting random objects on its head and body. The bear tries to push them away as he attacks Quentin, but more of his family members and friends come downstairs to help hurt the bear and scare it away. After a few minutes of getting beaten up, the bear decided to run outside. Quentin was injured and unconscious as his mother cried and insisted he has to be taken to a hospital immediately. Quentin was taken to the nearest hospital they could find, and he miraculously survived the attack. The cabin owner felt responsible for the attack, 
due to the lack of bear safety and volunteered to compensate for all the expenses needed for Quentin's recovery. After the attack, the owner also made sure to double the security of the cabins to avoid accidents like these in the future. Story 4 In 2020, a family driving through the remote highways of a national park in Canada spotted a white grizzly bear. Yes, you heard it right, it's a white grizzly bear, not a polar bear. As soon as they spotted it, they stopped driving and took a quick photo before driving off and posting it online. When the photo surfaced on the internet, many people debated whether it was a polar bear with a dirty coat or a real white grizzly bear. However, most scientists concluded that it is a white grizzly bear and extremely rare in the wild. The white coat of the grizzly bear is most likely to come from an unusual recessive gene present in its parents, belonging to a grizzly bear subspecies. People and even tourists from all over the world decided to visit the national park to see it. A team of photographers, namely Neil, Jerry, and Joe, had all decided to visit the national park and attempt to take a photograph of the white grizzly bear. Since the photo that surfaced online was a low quality, they strived to see the white grizzly in person and take a high-definition image of it to gain relevance to the internet. The three photographers drove from California to Canada for more than 15 hours to see the white grizzly bear. Although they have low expectations for their project, since the white grizzly is extremely rare, they still want to try taking a photo of it. They first drove to a nearby hotel to unpack all their belongings before driving to the exact spot where the family first saw the white grizzly. Due to the uncertainty of their safety, Jerry brought a stun baton with him and a can of bear spray in case they needed to defend themselves from wild animals, especially bears. The photographer searched the woods and took pictures of the breathtaking surroundings, explicitly looking for the white grizzly. When they fell tired after a couple of minutes of searching, they rested on a huge tree and sat on the ground under it. While drinking water and eating their sandwiches, Neil stood up and took pictures of the two other photographers resting. After taking the pictures, he checked it until one thing caught his eye. A strange brown figure was seen in the photo behind the tree where the two photographers were sitting. As Neil zoomed in on the picture, he realized it was not something spooky or supernatural. And before he could even warn the two photographers about what was behind them, Joe was suddenly grabbed by a grizzly bear from behind, shocking them. Neil dropped his camera, not caring about the pictures. He rushed to the scene as Jerry did too. Joe was repeatedly scratched by the bear across the face and body. Joe was crying in pain as Jerry took out his bear spray and told the two to hold their breath. Jerry sprayed the bear spray directly on the bear's face, causing the bear to bawl out and get enraged even more. The bear scratched Jerry's torso, causing it to bleed, but this didn't stop him from spraying. He sprayed until it was all gone and until the bear finally decided to run away. Joe was so severely wounded that he became unconscious. Neil and Jerry took Joe to a nearby hospital to help treat his wounds. Joe survived but needed a few more weeks to recover since his face was severely damaged. The photographer swore never to return to the national park again since the attack traumatized them. Story 5 Harold is a young college student who is also learning how to drive his new car. Despite being new to driving cars, Harold already has skills and can drive efficiently without the help of others. However, he is still learning and trying to acquire more skills by traveling to different roads and highways when he has the chance. Since he is also an adventurer, Harold often drives to national parks and spends his nights there. When he needs to study for an upcoming test, he drives alone to a national park and does his reviewing there. Being alone and connecting with nature affects his studies significantly since he always has high grades. This time, he went to a national park in Wyoming and is now on his way home when he stumbled upon an unexpected traffic jam in Tagwodi Pass. The traffic jam was long and he didn't know who or what was causing the heavy traffic. Harold patiently waited for the traffic to move, but it didn't. He just tried to entertain himself by playing games on his phone 
or calling friends to talk about his situation. However, the heavy traffic still hasn't moved an inch. Harold got out of his car to ask other drivers about the situation. The driver told him that a grizzly bear family was crossing the road, but eventually stopped in the middle. It was rude for the drivers to run over them, so they patiently waited for them to move to the side before driving forward. Harold understood the situation and found it cool to have grizzly bears in front of the heavy traffic. He instantly became curious about the grizzly bear family and grabbed his phone to take pictures of them from his car. Then he rushed to the front of the traffic jam and saw a grizzly family with a mother and three cubs. The other drivers also took pictures, so Harold joined the hype over these bears. He immediately turned his phone on and took photos of the grizzly and the cubs, but he wasn't satisfied. One lady told him he should just back away since the mother could be aggressive, but Harold didn't listen. Harold, being a little mischievous, approached the bears even more, which caused the people to gasp at his behavior. The others warned him not to get close, but he told them that grizzlies won't harm him. As he was getting closer, the mother grizzly began to growl, but it didn't stop him. Eventually, the grizzly became enraged and jumped at Harold. Harold was pinned to the ground, getting his phone thrown away, and the people were shocked. The bear began to attack Harold brutally by trying to rip his face off and biting his head. Harold used his fist to fight as he throws punches at the bear's face, but the grizzly is desperate to tear him to shreds. Harold's face was full of blood in no time as the grizzly also scratched his eye, causing him to scream in pain. The people also taking pictures of the bear got inside their vehicles in fear. They decided to honk their horns loudly to scare the bear. As the car horns were honked, the bear was startled and immediately ran away. When the bear ran away from Harold with his cubs, the people who got inside their vehicles came out to help Harold to the hospital. There, the doctors confirmed that his eye, which was scratched by the bear, could no longer be functional and that he needed to recover for months after the attack. Harold is horrified by the consequences of his actions, but he's still lucky to escape alive.